Sikkim subscriptions at Sikkim365.com. You may not have been paying attention, uh, and, and if you haven't been, we're about to help you understand a little bit more. But there's a House bill, 547, in the Texas legislature, and it's been through, I think, three waves of votes. And eventually on Monday, we'll go before the Senate. And it's House Bill 547. The Texas High School Coaches Association is vehemently against it. And we're now joined by Assistant uh, Assistant Executive Director Glenn West on Sikkim 365 Radio with Paul Catalina Craig and David Small. Glenn, thank you for jumping on, especially with such late notice as well. So let's start to try to educate everybody. What exactly is 547 trying to do? Uh, Thank you guys for having us. Uh, 547 basically says that uh, you do not have to be a member of that school or go to that school in order to participate in the UIL event. So um, two different scenarios. But, um, you, you know, you do – it does say that you have to live in the district, uh, but but you, you are not a – you, you're not a member of that school. You're not enrolled in that school. So basically, um, this is this is homeschooling, correct? Oh, it is. It's 100%. Yeah. That's what it is. Yes, for sure. And and, and there are states that do this for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, but but I want to say that in 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 a lot of those states that do it, uh, there there are there are guidelines that that at least have them part of the community you know one of our big fears is that you know we've uh, as always we play for the name on the on the front of our jersey and uh, in, in the school that you go to so that that's that's the fear but but more so than that the real uh, fear we have is the the unlevel playing field because uh, let's just say a basketball game, for instance, it's a Tuesday night and uh, we get home late, uh, 1030, 11 o'clock. Well, we may have a 730 class the next morning, maybe an English class. Um, you know, as we're going back into that class as a student athlete at the school, uh, we, we have to not only be there, but be alert, be ready to go. Because remember, we are under no pass, no play. If we, we slip up one six weeks and have a 69. Um, we can't participate uh, where uh, there, there there just isn't any regulation uh, of what's happening. Uh, and, and I guess in a world, uh, and it would be fair to say that, uh, you know, a parent could say that they, they are making their child get up at 730 and they are making them go through the rigor. But, but the fact of it is there's nobody uh, checking. There's checks and balances in the school. You have people over, uh, you have a teacher that's doing it, then you have a, head of the department that's over that teacher, and then you have the curriculum director over that curriculum. So there's several checks and balances to make sure that, that there are nothing uh, sneaky going on. There's been a lot of uh, athletes through the years um, that, that have fallen under this rule, and, and for better or for worse, it, it is the rule. You must, pass, you must pass to play. Glenn, also on that, I know that one of the things that – uh, you know the, the UIL and the there's always fighting is is transfers. Does this make it easy? Like if a and especially since I know that the the house says that the rule is permissive that school districts can choose to participate in it or not. But you know how easy that would be to you know get a, a wave going to to switch it if especially if it's a small one. But with transfers, couldn't somebody just move into the district and be quote unquote in a home school? And not really have to go through the same thing at a that a normal UIL kid that would switch schools go to. Well, I I, I don't know all the particulars there, uh, but I I do know this that even under the current rule, if um, if if I were to transfer from one school to the next, and it was at a lower level, let's say a freshman level, then I can't participate in the varsity level for a year. Uh, but then after a year's time. Uh, almost in every situation, then that athlete becomes legal. They just, it, the, the rule states for that year, they cannot participate in varsity, uh, in, in, in varsity participation at that school. So I just, uh, I, I, I can live where I want to live and go to that team. And for, for, for a year, I could not play varsity competition. But if I come in early enough into the game, then I could. So that, that, that's always a worry. Uh, the way we have it now. So yes, that does bring up that, but 
one of the points that you made is that the reason that we're talking about this being an unlevel playing field is that some school districts might allow that. Some school districts might not allow that, but we're playing each other. So if, it, if, if, if all was happening was it was just my district alone, then that's up to each individual school district. But it would be like uh, the Big 12 saying, you know, Baylor gets 85 scholarships, but Texas gets 90. Uh, it, you know, you just, you just have that situation. And, you know, we're in a world, a very competitive world, that uh, you're always trying to, to have the edge, have the advantage. And, you know, that's what rules are set up to try to keep things even and, and, le- and level. And that's just, that's a real fear, a real worry uh, for us. And, and that's just one of the things. You know, you start looking in individual sports like, uh, like golf, uh, tennis, uh, any, you know, sports like that. So while I'm in, uh, I'm an algebra class trying to get through. There's somebody that's on the course all day long, uh, practicing, doing what has to happen. But yet, you know, the, the, the person that's going to play is the one that has the lowest score. So I just, it's just really, really hard for us to wrap our arms around the fact that that would be a level playing field. Uh, and I'm sure there's people that listen to this today that take exception to what I'm saying. Say, well, we wouldn't do that. And, and there are plenty of people that would play by the rules and do it right but there's some that wouldn't and the the problem here is there's no there's nothing to stop there's no guardrails to keep that from happening I, I don't mean to single out someone who struggles in class but let's say you have a player an athlete whatever boy or girl who is uh an elite at what they do is the option if this bill passed and and correct me if i'm wrong that if they struggle academically that they can then become a homeschooler and something could kind of circumvent the system because they're not as monitored. And I don't know enough about homeschooling. I understand the reason. I get it. I understand that there are some very intelligent uh, students that come out of homeschooling. I get that a lot of people take it very seriously. But is that a, is that a possibility, Glenn, that is also a concern? I mean, it's a definite concern. I, I don't know exactly. that. That's definitely a fear. I don't know exactly how that's going to play out as this bill goes all the way through, but that's certainly a big-time concern. You know, I, I've coached in places before that, that and, and crud, even as, as when I was a, an athlete myself, I didn't go to school because I wanted to go to school. I went to school because I wanted to play sports. And in that time, as I matured, from a not very smart, immature kid to someone that realized, hey, I, I need to get my degree, uh, in my diploma. I need to graduate from high school. I need to go to college. That that didn't come about till I was older, till I really realized down the path. And my fear is that there's not a reason that you have to come to school. My fear is that as a small, uh, you know, adolescent, that you look up and say, you know, I, I want to play sports. Well, do you want to go to school? Not really, but I want to play sports. So I can, I can do that. And that is, that is a real fear. That's a real worry. I don't know the part of, can I just, I'm not passing. Can I quit? I, I think there's going to be, I sure, certainly hope there'll be guardrails around that, that, that if you're not passing, when you leave, you couldn't start playing, but obviously eventually you could. And, and, and those are just all the things that we're talking about that just really, really scare us about this. Uh, you know, it's not that the, the word is that you're trying to keep people from playing, and that's not it. We're trying to protect those who already have been doing this and doing it very well and making sure that they don't get taken advantage of. Glenn West, Assistant Executive Director, Texas High School Coaches Association, is with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. So it's now been through three different readings uh, and passed, and I thought maybe if I looked at the vote correctly, that maybe even the last one was even a, more of a, a split 80 to 64. It will now go up for discussion in the Senate. What's the timeline? Do they go and talk about it and then vote a day or two later? Do they talk about it Monday and then vote Monday? What is the, what's the timeline here? We know that it is the Senate on Monday. We know that Monday things start working that direction. I will tell you, based on what's happened so far, uh, we, we would be told it was coming for a vote, and it would not be. It would be the next day or the next day. So I, I can't tell you the exact day that that actually will come up for a vote in the Senate, but I do know now that it will. 
and, and I know that it goes over to the Senate floor on, on Monday. I do know that. Okay, here's a text, by the way. from. Well, go ahead, Paul. Uh, by the way, I do like uh, what uh, your executive director, Joe Martin, said about the property taxes going to pay the fire station down the road, but I've yet to see them let me drive that truck. So uh, I think that's a fair comparison to, to make it simple for people who say, well, we have property taxes. We should be allowed to public school activities. Well, I mean, but you're not going to the public school. Guys, here's the biggest thing right here. Here's the biggest thing. One of the greatest reasons why sports work so well in this state, every coach that works at a school in this state has to be a full-time employee. So you have great community. And so don't forget this piece. To be able to play sports in the state of Texas, in UIL sports, for a school, it becomes, it becomes a privilege. It's not a right. It's a privilege because you were able to do the things that you were supposed to do. You had to act right. You had to, you had to make your grades. You had to follow protocol and go beyond what anybody else would have to do in order to play. There may be a dress code. There may be a hair code. There may be something that goes with that athletic uh, position or team so that you can actually participate. It is a privilege. In this situation, it will become a right. All right, last thing, Glenn, and we appreciate your time. The, the, the timeline is Monday. If, in fact, and we, there are people who are listening who might want this to pass, and then there are those that like, man, I didn't know much about it. What, what are you suggesting if they are concerned about the bill? What are you suggesting they do? There's no question. They need to, uh, they need to contact their senator, their representative in their region. It will be, now it is in the Senate, so that is who they need to contact contact that person and explain how they feel. I mean, this, those people were elected to represent the people in their district. That's what needs to happen next. And, and speak your mind. That's, that's the American way. Thank you very much, uh, Glenn. Thanks for your time. It was good to see you at the banquet a couple of days, a couple of weekends ago as well. You bet. Yeah, uh, you and Joe Martin. I know you guys are doing a lot of work behind the scenes. Thanks for jumping on and kind of explaining this a little bit uh, to us. That's uh, Glenn West, Assistant Executive Director of the Texas High School Coaches Association. Uh, by the way, and it, there's a thread on Sikkim365.com in the premium section about House Bill 547. Good friend of mine, Wade, is the one that sent me a couple of notes about it. And uh, we appreciate Glenn West for making time to be a part of today's show. When we come back, 